Good morning and uh, welcome to this conversation with uh, JDSU today. Uh, with me, I have uh, uh, Sami Germanich, CTO uh, of Assurance and Analytics at uh, JDSU, and Rob Marston, the Strategic Marketing Director at uh, JDSU. Uh, I'm Monica Paolini with Sensafili, and uh, this conversation is part of a report on NFV and uh, uh, more specifically on the ecosystem that is developing uh, alongside uh, NFV. And today with GDSU, we're talking about uh, uh, the way that uh, uh, virtualization and NFV is changing the way um, operators uh, uh, test and monitor uh, their network. Um, how do you make sure that everything works correctly when uh, uh, everything is virtualized and um, the different functions no longer are no longer tied to uh, specific hardware. Now, to get started, I would like to ask uh, um, Rob to give us a little bit of an introduction uh, as to uh, what JDSU is doing in uh, in this area. Sure, Monica. Um, so, so JDSU, as you know, has a long history of working with um, customers and partners supplying solutions in, in the communications industry. And, and there's been transitions and, and transformations in the past that JDSU has always been part of helping our customers transform. Uh, NFV represents a, a fairly dramatic transformation that both our, our customers and, and our partners um, are, are, are dealing with. It changes how networks are constructed, how traffic flows, uh, how, how fast services are introduced and the types of services that are introduced. So, so JDSU's position is in, as a network and service enablement provider is to really help our, our customers and our partners um, manage this transition and, and help them through this change. And that um, starts with everything in terms of how networks are designed and constructed, um, where, where networks need to be instrumented for uh, effective real-time uh, testing, assurance, and analytics. But it also reaches all the way down to even the, the, the field technicians that are in the field that now are interacting with virtualized networks. And, and how do they interact with those networks? How do they interface with those networks? Um, and, and how do they exchange information with those networks? Um, and, and so over time, you're, you're gonna start to see how the business processes within a lot of our, um, our, our partners and, and, and our customers are gonna evolve. Um, and, and similarly, the, the types of in, in, in data and, and information that they require is gonna require a new, a new way of, of collecting that data from the network collecting it in, in, in real time, and, and then providing some intelligent context around that data. And, and so we, we provide solutions that, that again, help with how the network is constructed um, and, and how it becomes instrumented to support these real-time services. So everything from you know, how, it, how it changes the business processes to the, the staff in the field, to how it changes the business processes to the staff in the in the service and network operations center, and and even how it changes the the processes um, with with uh, organizations like product management and product marketing with many of our customers. Yeah, and, and this is really a wide uh, uh, change in in your approach. It's not just a. Adding a few things here and there, and, and a few features in a product, it's a, it's more of a, a, a it's wide ranging change of approach in terms of supporting NFV. Um, can you tell us uh, how you got there? What was the motivation for you to get, you know, to have such a, such an sort of aggressive in a sense of a, a deep, wide ranging and deep a change in your um, product? Um, so th thanks, Monica, for that. Actually, uh, JDSU have realized that this change is coming almost three years ago. And we understood that it is, as you mentioned, it's a fundamental change. It's not like I'm going to take my current product and I have to adjust it to work for the NFV. It, 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 we started with a new innovations on how we can actually now look at the new world of, through the NFV uh, glasses and understand what it takes now in this new era to be able to do all what you have been used to do in, in the normal network. And plus also there are things that have been introduced that was not existing before. Uh, as Rob was saying, services will be now instantiated in the new network uh, instant, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a second, right? Uh, you will see new services and you will be able to get these services uh, created, designed, deployed, 
and with the customers within few minutes because of the software defined network. So to do that, you have to also have the, all the function and the process that used to be with that also instantiated at the same time. So this, this takes a lot of innovation in terms of how you build products around that. And we were, uh, you know, we, we were seeing this almost three years ago, and we came up in the market actually early with a lot of innovation in this area, including our packet portal uh, product, you know, our uh, mediation layer uh, and correlation. All of them were in preparation for what we are seeing right now as the new era of the network function virtualization and how you monitor and monetize your network in this new era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this is, this is a, a, also a challenge in terms of how, how do you do it right. So maybe we can talk a little bit about how, how is that you do it. Um, so it used to be that testing was something you do at the beginning, you make sure the network wor works and then you're happy, you keep going. And uh, now the network keeps changing. And uh, the, uh, you, don't, you cannot really test an element with a probe because right. it's no longer there. So maybe we can go a little bit, uh, go through all these changes. So let's talk a little bit first about uh, the probe concept that you, you, you cannot just test an element the, because it no longer exists. Right. Everything is virtualized. So how do you test for per performance? Yeah. And, and quality of uh, experience as well. Exactly. So, you know, traditional approaches have been using, you know, hardware probes to look at specific interfaces look at side interface and try to understand from the interface and the traffic, what is the customer experience. Now with the virtualized network, services and the network element itself has been moved to a virtual domain where it's being orchestrated and designed and deployed uh, quickly as the need is happening through the virtualized network. So the monitoring and the assurance has to follow that. So now where, you know, you had physical interfaces before that you need to monitor, this physical interface doesn't exist anymore. So you have to take a different approach, a, a total pure software approach where, you know, getting data from the traffic is one instance, but there are other data that you need now to integrate using a mediation layer so that you can actually see where the services are being used and utilized and where is the customer experience from his handset device all the way until the core. So the concept of end-to-end -end visibility now becomes real with, uh, with the concept of virtualization because every element of this end-to-end -end service is being virtualized and you have to find where the, where the instance of the service delivery is and follow it and try to monitor and get the data so that you'll be able to stitch together all the information about the service and provide the end-to-end -end visibility. So uh, you move from a, a, a more localized testing to a, an end-to-end, -end, and that is also has the added advantage that it enables you to capture the quality of experience more directly rather than what happens in different parts of the, service, the system. What's the difference there in terms of what operators are going to learn and uh, how is that going to help them? So one, one major difference is that um, it is not anymore, uh, you cannot just deploy a single silo solution on a single node. You will actually have to be able to look at the total um, um, delivery chain cycle of, um, of the service. What this will help the service provider is first understand where the customer having an experience problem. Is it at you know, his handset device? Is it at the, at the, at the you know, radio access network? Is it at the back pole? Is it at the core? And you have to be able to quickly isolate where this problem is because with software defined network, with network virtualization, you know, instances will be changing in, in real time. So the, now the real time concept of isolating and finding where the problem of the user is that is impacting his experience has to be immediately identified and you portray to the you know, operator so that they can actually manage this in real time. The concept of automation becomes really important here because you cannot wait until the customer feels the experience. As things are changing quickly, you have to react as well quickly. You cannot be any more pro, you know, reactive. You have to be more proactive in this case. So the real-time aspect of, a new, of the new era and the mediation and correlation layer that requires this, this real-time becomes an essential piece. And operators now understanding that they cannot anymore just have this kind of a swivel chair approach where they go to different systems to understand what the customer experience is they have to see this from an end-to-end -end view. And, and this is a changing in, in the process itself within the operator of how to manage these new services. 
So it, it is, a, I guess it's a, it's a more than one dimensional change here because it's end to end in terms of the, the sort of horizontal side of things. And then also in, the, in, the, in time because it's real time. So it, it's no longer a t testing is, or uh, monitoring is not always a, um, sort of an isolated activity, but it's an ongoing continuum. So, and it's, so testing and monitoring are becoming in a sense one, one and the same, right? Well, if I could add, I, I think there's what we're, what we're seeing now is there's the more real time nature around assuring services uh, is, is extremely vital, not just to maintain customer experience or improve customer experience, but also um, to allow you to accelerate new services to market more, more, more quickly. Right. So um, what, what we're predicting and, and what you will effectively end up seeing is, is a tighter um, sort of real time interaction between monitoring systems with things like policy systems mm -hmm. um, so that the network itself could make the appropriate adjustments to um, in, in real time to accommodate changes in, in network demand uh, services and ultimately introducing and, and uh, monetizing further services. Um, okay, I lost your last question. So could you, your last answer, could you go over it again and then? Um, so so I, I believe in, in, in the past, traditionally, you, you, you saw testing and monitoring that was something that was simply done to enable a service. You test it, make sure the network is performing, and then you walk away. And maybe if you're lucky, you're alerted if there's a problem, and then you've got the swivel chair approach, as Sammy described, for uh, understanding the, the, the network issue and resolving the issue. When you look at what operators are trying to accomplish, it's not just about reducing operation costs, but they're looking for to NFV and SDN as, as a way of to help them monetize and accelerate new service introduction. So testing and monitoring also needs to evolve to become more real time in nature more continuous in nature. And that requires a, a, a more pervasive approach to, to monitoring. It also requires a real-time approach to monitoring, and it also requires a tighter integration between monitoring systems and, and things like policy systems, so that the, the, the network itself or the, the monitoring systems can inform things like policy controllers around in, in real time to changes in the network or changes in policies in the network that need to be enacted. So, so testing and monitoring is becoming more integrated with the business processes throughout the full life cycle um, of services. Yeah, and that's very interesting because once you have this kind of integration, um, you are much more powerful, but at the same time, you need to have a sort of consistent uh, interface or consistent tool that you can apply to the different elements in the network because if I have a phone I'm trying to uh, watch a video and it doesn't work well where is the problem is it in Iran is it in the core um, where else or is it the, the, the wrong policy set uh, so how can you help operators to say well this is where the problem is coming from and, and this is the innovation that GDC has been working on for the last three years and um, the, the understanding of may be uh, being able to monitor and capture information across the, the entire path of the service, starting from the user handset all the way to the ISP and the application provider and content provider. And uh, one of the innovations we are introducing here is, you know, where in the network you're going to have to monitor. Traditionally, with, you know, with, with physical interfaces, you understand what the physical interface and you can instantiate a hardware probe. With network function virtualization, these instances are creating all over the place, which means you have to have a consistent interface to find where the data is and be able to bring it and analyze it in real time in the cloud system. Mm -hmm. So we are introducing you know, a different concept of um, monitoring the data beside the physical probes, which is you know, almost virtual probes, looking at the data at different uh, virtual interfaces and capturing these packets and bringing them to a, you know, a monitoring system in the cloud so that we can analyze the end-to-end -end view. Um, the, the other important aspect is that traditionally, 
uh, you were looking and monitoring at the core, but ignoring a very important piece of the network, which is the RAN network. So RAN itself is becoming also virtualized, which now is introducing new interfaces that didn't exist before that I can actually monitor, that now I can understand if the problem is in the RAN versus the core. Backhaul is becoming also an important piece of the network now also virtualized. So all of these different virtualized segments of the network has to be monitored in real time within the same concept of delivering the service. So I can isolate where the problem happens when a customer has a problem. So basically you can track RAN, backhaul, and core, and then if something goes wrong, ask where, where, is, where is the problem coming from and then trace back the source of uh, the problem, right? That's right, absolutely. And correlate the, the data coming from all those different segments. They have some meaningful, um, important yeah. people indicator. Yeah, now uh, Rob, you mentioned new services. And uh, so uh, the, the, the sort of the, the obvious new service is to introduce new services for uh, the existing subscribers. Uh, uh, and uh, that, that's, that's very important, but there are also a, a new range of services that are not necessarily directed as subscribers, or a lot of uh, machine to machine. Um, and that really creates a huge uh, challenge for monitoring and testing because those services have a very different type of requirements. Um, so are, are you addressing that part of the market as well? Well, I, I mean, I, I think when you, when you look at machine to machine um, and, and that whole industry uh, and, and the vertical industries that will develop around that, those technologies, I mean, the, at the heart of it is, is, is the mobile network and the mobile connectivity. And as Sammy said, behind every mobile network, there's there's a wireline network providing backhaul and 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 and, and connectivity. So, the the challenge that machine to machine sometimes represents, and there's a number of challenges, um, in, includes the the sheer scale in terms of the number of data, uh, the, the amount of data that can be generated, and the and and the number of points that now, uh, in, in many cases, need to be monitored or or understood. Um, machine to machine also has the 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 potential to, to really start uh, increasing the signaling level on, on the network, right? So to conserve uh, battery life, for instance, uh, sensors may only turn on periodically. Um, and, and if they all turn on at once, you're gonna run into situations where you're, you're flooding your network with, um, with, with a lot of signaling traffic. But it, I think another key challenge is in the, in the past, Sensor networks and, and machine to machine traffic was, was often carried on dedicated or proprietary networks. But in, in order to really scale and, and innovate and, and create new services and, and realize the vision of these 50 billion connected devices, all this traffic is now commingling on a single common um, radio network and IP network. And, and understanding the data of value and the data of criticality and, and being able to select the data of interest um, in in a timely um, way and ex extract the, the the valuable information of that that is going to be a challenge and that that's an area where if you look at the technologies that we're discussing and the JDSU offers we, we address many of those requirements if not most of those requirements that machine the machine will, will will continue to pose as as devices grow as interconnected devices become more more interconnected and also um, you know uh, as we mentioned um, the machine to machine is new services uh, traditional uh, monitoring approaches, even with customer experience, if a customer cannot reach a website, yes, he is not uh, happy and you need to actually be able to understand that and proactively uh, fix it. But if uh, a, a meter uh, cannot charge the car that's parked there, uh, you know, there is money that's being involved, there is revenue that's being lost. So now monitoring is not anymore just an assurance system to make sure that you're meeting uh, the quality value. There is actually benefits and revenue that may be lost if your system is not reacting and monitoring in real time these transactions and making sure that they are happening. So now we're moving from the point of becoming uh, 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 an assurance system to a monetizing system that is helping the carriers make sure that the revenue is coming and coming on time. Yeah, and that's basically, it's, it's, a, it's a wider reach because obviously with, with subscribers, yes, there is the idea that you want to prevent churn, but it's a sort of a longer term process. Here it's much more quantifiable and, um, and it's quantifiable in different way for different systems, services. So the service might on the surface, two services might look the same, but the requirements, the SLA requirements are very different. So yeah. you, need, you need to be able to have a different granularity um, in there. 
So um, now let me ask you a little bit about uh, um, how this change, this is, this is a, a huge change in terms of how operators run their networks, is going to impact different type of operators. Are you seeing any difference in terms of regions, in terms of size of operators? Um, what, what are you seeing out there with your customers? So we are seeing uh, different maturity level uh, depending on the market. Um, European market today, we are engaged with several um, uh, carriers there that are, um, you know, seriously taking this challenge and actually taking it to the next step because virtualization is happening almost on stages here when you're first virtualizing the network. But uh, to actually uh, fully engage the benefit of virtualization, you need this concept of network breathing. You know, the network has to, you know, expand when it's needed and then come down when you don't need it so that you can re reutilize the sources. That's in, in itself create a challenge that you have to have an ecosystem of different integration between different elements and orchestration between them. And the monitoring system and the assurance system has to be part of this orchestration. So as the network breathes, the monitoring system itself expands in size so that it can take the data as the network increases. And at the same time, as resources shift around, the, the system has to follow the resources around. So this concept of breathing now, we are seeing carriers in, in Europe are taking it seriously and working on it. We are also seeing carriers that we are uh, working with in North America that are uh, understanding the value of using virtualization to um, uh, meet the competition from the over-the-top competitors who are, you know, doesn't have the same challenge they have. They may have the legacy system, so they are already virtualizing everything they are doing uh, and, and, and taking market share. So the, the traditional carriers are feeling the pain and virtualization is the solution to reduce the cost and be able to meet head to head with these over the top competition. So we are engaged with them and we are seeing maturity in this market. You know, uh, in Asia Pacific, it's still, um, you know, being talked about. We don't see the maturity yet coming in. However, uh, we are seeing a lot of engagement in terms of understanding how virtualization is going to impact. One very interesting note is that as people talk about virtualization, we are still uh, in, a, in a carrier grade environment. Carriers are still worried about how they're going to transition. So what we are seeing, what we call a hybrid virtualization approach, where you still have the physical network and you still have the physical interface and also part of the network in the virtualized. And this is actually one of the challenges that we have addressed earlier on, that we're not just going to only be purely virtualized, we have to take this hybrid approach and provide the transition between a fully uh, non-virtualized into a fully virtualized network. Yeah, I think that's a very important point. I mean, this is a, a journey of transformation. It's something that's going to take years to evolve, and, and you're going to have this scenario where you're, you're going to have this hybrid model where you'll, you'll have uh, you know, a mixture of virtualized and non-virtualized networks. You, you'll have services traversing between the two. Um, and, and again, being able to piece together that end-to-end -to -end view as, as a service and as applications and ultimately as a customer experience traverses across those different environments is going um, to become vital. Um, and and that's, that, I mean, that, that's what our, our customers are looking to us to, to help them with, right, is, is through this transformation because it's happening fast, but at the same time, it's going to evolve over a, a period of years. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, you, you don't want to have two different monitoring systems that are completely separate and independent from each other. So you can provide a solution that works on both. And then depending on the pace of transition, every operator will uh, adapt. Uh, and yeah, and then in fact, that, that's what I was uh, wanted to ask you about, because it's, uh, it's a gradual, long-term process. Uh, um, and it should be that way. Otherwise, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be too difficult to, to implement. Um, so let me, um, in closing, let me ask you then, how, how do you foresee this type of the, the gradual development out there in terms of what is going to be to happen first in terms of virtualization and what should we expect from JDSU in, as, as you follow and uh, as I imagine you'd expand uh, your product portfolio if you can share a little bit about what we, we should expect over the next few years. So we are already engaged and uh, you're seeing a lot of our products already move into virtualization, including, uh, by the way, and even uh, traditional instrumentation is moving into virtualization. Um, so we are already um, uh, engaged. As I said, we, we have a launched couple of products that are supporting the hybrid virtualization approach. We're going to see them being deployed. 
the other important thing that GDCU is also realizing is that this is an ecosystem and, and we are partnering with a lot of different players in the market so that we are making sure that, you know, in the, in the lack of full standardization right now, we are integrating with partners and making sure that we're providing the carriers with a transition solution until full standardization is in place. We are engaged in the standardization bodies so that we can provide our input and feedback of what we are seeing in the market. So you will see a lot of activities and uh, launches product from our side that is supporting uh, this effort. I think, you know, just to add, um, you know, if I, if I look back at what JDS, JDSU has done, and Sammy mentioned it earlier, even up to three years ago, we started to introduce virtualized functions. So um, going back two years ago, we introduced our, our packet portal platform, right? So when you look at packet portal, what, what exactly did we do? Well, we looked at how the networks are transforming, how services it were extending farther and farther uh, into the network to the edge. And we realized that the traditional ways of, of collecting data, of probing networks just economically doesn't scale. So if you look at a traditional hardware-based approach to probing, what we've done is we've, we've virtualized it. We've decoupled the data collection and the data aggregation and management. And we ran that in software in open computing environments. And we miniaturized the technology that is required to collect data and, and collect information about, uh, specific information about network and application performance. And that's given us uh, a virtualized um, data collection system and probing system that allows us to extend um, points of visibility way out to the edge of the network where it's no longer economically viable to probe. Um, and those could be small cells, they could be indoor small cells, they could be remote enterprise branch offices. In the past, you didn't need to even monitor that because you know, traffic and applications were, were, were always back home. But now in a more dynamic environment, in, in a more non-deterministic environment, in a, in a more meshed environment, it's very hard for anyone to determine where that traffic is going. And, and that's only going to accelerate when you look at NFV for the, many of the drivers Sammy was, um, was, was citing earlier. So, I mean, JDSU has already been down this, this journey or this transformation. Um, many, many of the, the, the concepts Sammy was describing earlier in terms of even how um, field staff test networks is, is evolving, right? So capabilities that were, were often... Um, you know, found in a or implemented in a physical test set um, are, are going to are going to evolve as well. As well, I mean, the the, the user's interface is going to start to look uh, a lot like a, a smart device, right? And and their ability to to test and and, and interact with those virtualized networks is is uh, is starting to occur as well. So, a lot of the technology, a lot of the assets that JDSU has are, are being adapted and applied to these new types of evolving business processes. And that's really what's at the, the heart of this, is how does the business process evolve for the service provider and, and, and for our customers? And, uh, um, and, and, and yeah, definitely, I mean, we, we see virtualization affecting uh, multiple aspects of, of our customers' uh, business. Um, sometimes some areas faster than others, but they're, they're all transforming at, at different degrees. And our goal is to, to really be there and help them through those, those, those periods of change. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a fascinating, but it's a, it's a very, it's a very demanding task uh, uh, that we have in front of us. Well, uh, Simon, Bob, uh, Rob, um, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to me today. And um, this uh, conversation is part of a report on NFV that is available on our website at www.sensefreeconsulting.com. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Monica.